This video is going to show you how to do manual tracking in OpenTrack. You almost never will have to do manual tracking if you're using retroreflective markers or high contrast type systems. However, if you want to track something that doesn't have high contrast, uh, you're pretty much stuck. You've got to do it manually. Now hopefully you're only tracking one or two markers this way. If you're tracking more than that, uh, this can get a little bit tedious. But uh, let me see what we can do to help you guys through this. All right, so first of all, let's pick a video to load. I'm going to go into sort of my old labs directory, and let's find something with a couple of uh, different markers on it. Um, all right, let's go to uh, this inelastic collisions lab. So I'm going to grab a video. Um, I'll take that one. Frame rate, and this is 210 frames per second. And here it is. So. What I have here are four markers. There are two of them that are effectively static, they're not moving. Uh, and then we have these two markers here um, on these carts. These carts are on wheels. They are nearly frictionless, although not completely. And uh, Bill here is going to roll one cart into the other. Um, so let's start, set our start and end frames. I'm not going to do a huge number of frames for the manual tracking here for the simple reason that, uh, let's get this going here for the simple reason that manual tracking is a little bit labor intensive and uh, you'll get the point very quickly. You don't have to watch me track hundreds of frames doing it. So um, let's set the, I want to get right up almost next to the collision there. Okay, we'll start there. And then here, if I'm on the scrubber and I hit page down, I'm going backwards. If I hit page up, I go forward. You can see the number of frames here. So we'll go right to there, set end. So what I've got there, is 357 to 397 frames, 40 frames. That shouldn't be too much to do a manual tracking. I'll hit continue. Now I've got to do my calibration. So in this box, I happen to know the distance between these two static markers is 0.6, oops, not 50, 60 meters. I tab to the next field and then I mark my markers. Here's the first one, here's the second one, and that gives us a calibration constant of 0.033 which uh, that means about 3.37 millimeters per pixel. All right, let's hit continue. Now, um, I'm going to add markers. So I will, uh, let's go ahead and do, let's, we'll, we'll go here first. So this one, left cart, and I seem to remember this weighs about uh, 0.506 kilograms. It's not a static marker. And this one, is the right cart, also 0.506 kilograms. We'll make it, oh, let's make it blue. I like blue. Okay. And we can we can still do the uh, s some static markers. Let's go ahead and do that. So here, this is going to be left ref. We'll make it yellow. It's static. All right. And you can barely see it, but it's there. And then call this one right ref. Let's make that orange static. Okay. All right. So I've got all the markers that I need. Uh, by the way, I should mention that when you add static markers, they'll always appear at the end of the list rather than at the beginning. The dynamic or trackable markers always start at the top. I don't want to add a virtual marker. Oh, you know what? I'm going to add a virtual marker here. Let me go ahead and do that. Uh, this virtual marker is going to be uh, at the midpoint between these two. It's going to be at the center of mass. So I'll do that. Okay, it gives me one of those. That's just some error checking. And we'll call it COM. The first marker is going to be the left cart. Second marker is going to be the right cart. Now, if I had chosen the static markers, it would give me a geometric center between the two. It's not particularly useful. So uh, at this point, we're going to get a center of mass at any given point. So, okay. And there it is. You can see it sort of showing up in that area. Now I'll hit continue. Now, right, project name, uh, example manual. Okay, so it creates that project. Now, notice that the only two markers that show up here are the left and the right cart. And that's because they're the only markers that really need tracking. Everything else doesn't need tracking. Um, we still have a search radius, uh, so, so we can use that if we really want to, if we're going to auto-track. And by the way, this data does auto-track very, very nicely. We're going to, however, go to manual tracking mode. 
Now, so I'm in manual tracking mode, and let's say I select the left card. I gotta select which marker I'm gonna track. If I use my up and down arrows, so it will, I'm just keeping on pressing the down arrow, it, it scrolls through all of the list, up arrow, down arrow. So uh, with only two markers, up or down doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna start with that left cart. The left cart's gonna be relatively easy to track. So uh, here, right arrow, that takes it over a frame. And now if you have a mouse, I'm working on a laptop, so this is gonna be a little slower. But if you have a mouse, you can be literally um, uh, marking with one hand and hitting the right arrow with the other hand. So the first so many frames, all I'm doing is I'm clicking where I want to put that marker. So I click with the mouse, hit the right arrow to go forward. Click with the mouse, hit the right arrow. Click with the mouse, hit the right arrow. Click with the mouse, hit the right arrow. So at some point, the, the bumpers, these are magnetic bumpers. Uh, actually, uh, no, this is inelastic, so these are Velcro bumpers. They're going to engage, and once those bumpers engage, then my job is a little bit harder. Let's get that marked. Because then I'm going to have to actually do some work on the left hand side. Okay, just about there. There it goes, it's starting to move. There's a little bit of a bounce between here. So you get the idea. I'm simply marking where I want it to go. If I don't like where it is, I just move over a little bit. And these are this has such a high frame rate for the speed that what you're going to see when you look at the tracks is uh, that these guys are, are barely moving at all. How many more? 395. Two more frames. Okay, and 397, I'll go over just a little bit. So it really doesn't look like we've we've gone through the collision much here at all. Okay. Alright, so now, it, you see what just happened? I just went back to th frame 357. So once you've set your start and end frames, you can't track past there. Uh, you have to go back and reset that, and it's probably quicker and less error prone if you just start the whole process over. Again, if you want to start the whole process over, you process over, you click the reload. I'm not going to do that right now. All right, so I'm here at the beginning. I'm going to hit the down arrow to switch markers. Uh, okay, here we go. And right arrow. And now, when I click on this one, you'll actually see that it appears blue. And here i got to be a little more careful. This is, uh, with this kind of frame rate, 210 frames a second with slow speed, manual tracking is really not what you want to do if you can at all help it. Uh, this is why I highly recommend using high contrast markers and not having to do this. Taking a little bit of prep time in your data collection is really worth your effort later on um, while I'm doing this. In the old days, uh, even with automatic tracking systems, we had to do an awful lot of this sort of thing. Um, and it might take something like half an hour per trial just to track it. Now, that's with full body markers, you know, 21 to 28 markers. Um, but still, that's a lot of time that you sort of want back in your life. Um, these days, with modern tracking systems, 3D motion capture systems like what are at AI DuPont, um, these types of motion capture systems do the tracking on the fly. At, you know, they can go at speeds up to 500 frames a second with a tracking that happens in the hardware uh, that lags by about three frames. Um, so if 497 frames per second is the tracking speed. So we're getting there, 382. Again, you can see how this can take you a little bit of time. Now, almost done. Bring it all the way through and then you'll see what the data looks like. So good, there we go. And you're going to be able to see exactly how steady my hand is. Or not, okay. So 
I read any good books lately? So almost done. Um, all right. So sometimes good then to scroll through. So I'm just scrolling through the frames and watching to make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, I found, I'm running Linux right now, I found that on Windows systems with the right graphics card, if you have hardware acceleration, uh, you get almost no lag. It's really quite beautiful. Um, I've had good luck on some of the more powerful Macintoshes as well. Uh, I'm running Linux with an ATI video card, and uh, this is not great for uh, speed. Okay, continue. We'll say OK. Creates the data file. And now if I want to show a graph, uh, let's uh, do left and right. We're just going to do the exposition and plot. So you can see it's a little bit shaky. And if, if you do this automatically, this kind of bumpiness you're not going to see. Uh, the uh, tracking algorithm, algorithm is actually quite good. Um, you can also, if you need to, do some fitting of some of this, some zooming. So if you want to do a fit and zoom of the initial part, um, I'm going to hit my um, Z key and drag out. I'm just going to zoom and look at the pre-collision data. It'll ask me if I want to zoom. Yep. Let's go ahead and do that. And now, um, options. Actually, this... This may actually re redo this because uh, I didn't check my. It's about half. Of it. Let's go say 20. And let's do. What else? Show points. Yes, no smooth. Okay. Yeah, so that's about right. And now let's do actually a linear fit. It will fit both of these. Um, the plot. And so now what you're seeing here is a fit to the left and to the right cart. Um, and you can see the left cart, there's no slope, so basically it's not moving the right cart. That fit gives you the velocity, uh, the average velocity before the collision uh, with a pretty high R squared. This other R squared value is pretty much ridiculous because why? Well, uh, when you have no slope, uh, R squared is meaningless. So uh, you sometimes get some very, very strange values. So this can be basically ignored. All right, uh, that's it for this particular tutorial. Um, that gives you a uh, glancing view at how to do manual tracking so that you're not completely lost. I guess the one other thing that I should say about manual tracking is that occasionally, if you lose a marker in automatic tracking, you might have to track a few frames manually. And then once you get past the difficult parts, go back to automatic tracking and it usually works very ni very nicely to fill in places where auto tracking can't handle. All right, good luck.